Are you tired of waiting for sparks to fly on your dating app? Do you dream of running through airports to deliver an out-of-breath, unplanned monologue? Then stop doom-scrolling and start listening to Meet Cute Rom-Coms, feel-good love stories that take you from chance encounter to grand romantic gesture in just 15 minutes. We're bringing rom-coms back. Get a brand new Meet Cute series on the first Tuesday of every month with new episodes twice a week. Fall in love with Meet Cute Rom-Coms wherever you find your podcasts. Is this where we kiss? Welcome to Girls Gone Hallmark, a Hallmark Review Podcast. I'm Megan, and I'm your longtime Hallmark movie fan. I'm Wendy, and I'm your f- former Hallmark hater. Today we're discussing Checking It Twice, which kicked off Countdown to Christmas on Friday, October 20th, 2023. We would love for every one of you listening to be our friend on Instagram. You can find us. We are Girls Gone Hallmark, and we're Megan and Wendy on Instagram. Jump into our Facebook group, Girls Gone Hallmark. There's been tons of discussion about the countdown to Christmas kickoff weekend. So many polarizing opinions. Some of them were shocking to me. I I can't wait to get into this movie. And I want to tell you that we have some preliminary ratings information on this movie. It was the sixth most watched cable program on Friday night with 1.6 million live viewers. That's a big number. For a Christmas movie in October, that's a big number. I wonder if those 1.6 million viewers were as disappointed as I was. Uh Uh-oh, let's hear a synopsis. (laughs) Okay. A journeyman hockey player falls for a real estate agent in a career crisis when he's traded to her hometown and moves into the cottage in her hockey-loving family's backyard. News and notes. This was filmed in March 2023 in... You just have I know. I have no memory. Kelowna. Kelowna, British Columbia. I was going to apologize for anybody who lives there. Julian Harris, former bachelorette, current lifestyle influencer. Ruining the pronunciation of their very nice town. This script was written by Steve Beauregard, who contacted 103 producers and eight asked to see the script it was purchased in september 2022 he's a brand new writer where did you find that news note and his local hometown newspaper oh that's nice yes. that's nice this movie was originally titled christmas goals we'll talk more about that in a minute <laughs> okay. kim matula stars as ashley get your hallmark bingo cards out as kim matula was in 10 episodes of the series unreal she must have been one of the ladies mm-hmm she was also in over 900 episodes of The Bold and the Beautiful, and she stole the show in last year's Ghosts of Christmas Always. Kevin McGarry plays Scott. Now, McGarry has 39 acting credits and can be seen in When Calls the Heart as Mounty Nathan. He plays Mr. Lacey Chabert in the Wedding Veil movies and was seen in My Growing Up Christmas List last year. Brittany Mitchell plays Sister Julie. And she has 23 acting credits, and it's a little bit of, like, acting whiplash, because it's, like, (laughs) the gift of peace on Hallmark and Gingerbread Miracle. And then we go a little bit darker with movies like Not Worth Dying For and Send Me to Hell, Baby. Send Me to Hell, Baby. What? Is that, like, a Lifetime movie? Or is that, like, some horror genre? (laughs) Horror? You're going to get in my head, Megan. Okay. Jamila Hall plays Becca. She has 11 acting credits, including the Dying to Belong remake on Lifetime alongside Shannon Dortry, another name. I, I'm i shocked you can't say I that. Can't, Doherty. I can't ever. I have to see that movie. Yes, did I do. watch it already? I almost think maybe you did. I might We have. discussed this early, early, early on. Yeah. Jackson Jensen plays Toothless Tony with a total of six acting credits. This is his very first Hallmark appearance. He's got Hallmark sidekick vibes for me. This movie was directed by Kevin Fair. He has 42 directing credits, including most recently Three Bed, Two Bath, One Ghost, and also directs the upcoming A Season for Family. And as of the recording of this episode, this movie has a 7.3 rating on IMDb that blows my mind. I don't get it. Let's let's talk first impressions. I don't know anything about hockey, 
But I do know that this movie was a real whiff. It's a hockey metaphor. I had to Google it. I get it. (laughs) My first impression is, what exactly are we checking twice? This metaphor falls flat for me. Yeah, right? I mean, other than like body check and hockey, but like... And checking it twice is a Christmas thing, but it it doesn't actually make sense. And therefore, I think writer Steve's original title, Christmas Goals, while less catchy than checking it twice, is more accurate. They're hockey goals. They're both talking about future goals. Yeah, okay. Future plans. I think it's... But Christmas goals? This movie was not about Christmas. No, the whole, in fact, my husband's number one observation is this is not a Christmas. Movie. It's like, well, what are we, when are we going to set it? Let's set it in Christmas Let's time. Let's drink some eggnog. It's like, it's one of those, you know, like, I love when you do it. Tick, 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 tick. Yeah. Tick, tick, <laughs> tick, 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 tick. Yeah. One of those. Exactly. <sighs> well, I would like to apologize up front because this movie was pretty widely enjoyed i would nobody that i saw was saying this is going to claim the top spot this is not taking over the tyler hines uh three minute juggernaut yeah no but a lot of people did seem to enjoy this movie but i must ask why so i have exactly one thing i liked about this movie okay and it's that the leads kim matula and kevin mcgarry are at the top of their game, they're fantastic on screen. I enjoy them together. I found them both very comfortable and natural to watch on screen. Mm-hmm. And perhaps that's what people are playing off of. Because if you were to, let's say you're watching this like most people watch a Hallmark movie, which is to say not very closely. Mm-hmm. Maybe I would have liked this better. If you're not paying attention to the plot, you're not paying attention to everything else, and you're just kind of experiencing these two attractive people interacting nicely on screen, maybe it's an okay movie. All right. I I agree. I also enjoyed Kim Matula and Kevin McGarry. This was the first time I really looked at Kevin McGarry, and I thought, he looks like Patrick Dempsey. Oh, good hair. Good hair, blue eyes. I think they look very similar, but I enjoy him as an actor. We don't see him in a ton of stuff because I think he's so like bombarded with When Calls the Heart. Sure. We don't watch that show. But um, to be fair, he's been in the well, biggest the, the, movies the, of the yeah, past couple of years. Totally. With that Boston accent. So I can't ever, like in this movie, I was like, is he doing an accent? Like, I don't know what his real... Mm speech pattern is is that the word i believe this is true kevin mcgarry okay kim matula was great she was such a standout in last year's movie i felt this role was beneath her Mm. and him quite frankly Mm. i did have two likes the one scene when kevin mcgarry is like serving tea at that cute little it seemed like it was apple like a... Cider, it was an apple cider event. Yes, but it was like in, in a retail store or something. Oh, yeah? I don't know. He was so sweet, like to the little, the girl, little girl and the teddy bear and all that. I was like... That I, was nice. Yeah. I could see me like being tell, attracted to that. to wait a minute because it's a little hot. So sweet. Very sweet. So cute. <clears throat> the other thing I liked in this movie, and this was maybe one of the only things I liked in this movie, was... That Scott's realization that he wasn't playing hockey for himself, that he was playing for his dad and living in his dad's shadow. And I thought this was a relatable angle. One we get often in Hallmark, but it's usually like, I don't want to work for the family business. Yes. I want, you know, instead here, the character had been playing hockey all his life, couldn't quite live up to his father's image. And when he comes to the realization, like, what am I doing? Like, I'm, I don't even have any passion for this. Yes. I'm a better coach than I am player. So I kind of liked that. I wish that was kind of explored more. That's a nice point because the scene when his dad receives the award and he's like, I like to thank my teammates. I think it's really telling that the closest relationships he had in his life were his teammates, Mm -hmm. which is not to say that you, obviously you could have family like teammates. I'm certain, but 
that that was the only place that he had made a connection with people in spite mm-hmm. of the fact that he had a child. Right. I think that was a, that your point is good. Like that sends it home that hockey doesn't need to be your whole world. Right. Right. But that's where it ends. Well, let's talk what we wished. Okay. So I get too caught up in the details in these sports movies because mm-hmm. Hallmark doesn't really have the budget to do them justice. Mm-hmm. Now, I do know that Steve Beauregard is a sports fan. I don't fault any of this particular issue on the writing. The team is small. Their locker room looks like something out of the Mighty Ducks. There are absurd things that happen, like a player stopping mid-game to speak to a fan. I get that that's supposed to be a humorous moment. That's never (laughs) going to happen, even in a minor league small town hockey team. Right. And... What I had a hard time with is Scott, Kevin McGarry, acts like all of this is new to him. He's been playing forever, but he's surprised that he has responsibilities to the team Mm -hmm. outside of practice. He treats practice like it's optional in some moments, but also asks for more ice time in others. Like, well, I'd rather be skating than serving at this apple cider event, but I'd rather be building a snowman than going to practice. Right. Sir, you would know. Even... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> on a minor league team, you have responsibilities to the team and to the community and someone who wants so badly. Yeah, to be called up. You, you think you would play the game. Right. And be the guy everyone wants to be around because mm-hmm. there's more to it than just your ability on the ice. Mm-hmm. That's funny that you mentioned this like minor league team. There was one scene where he was helping a teammate with his shot. Yes. And I was like, this is not a youth league you have hockey coaches team. Coaches who are professionals, exactly. <laughs> and if you're good enough to be on this like minor league team, you know how to shoot, right? Yes. But I. But, but you I, would also have a coach whose entire job yes. is shooting. Yes. Or an offensive coach. Right. <laughs> exactly. I mean, yes. There's like you know pitching coaches and quarterback coaches that specialize in that sort of thing, and I get that, but. It felt like a moment where McGarry, Scott Briggs, was coaching someone who's never played before. Right. It just Again, it's like the Mighty Doug soft hands moment. And the coaches were like looking off from the side like, oh, yeah, good idea. Mm, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) What? (laughs) What else did you wish for? Well, I'm not really sure why this was Hallmark's lead movie for Countdown to Christmas. I don't get it. I think... In my early days in 2020, I thought they're going to bury a movie like this in October where nobody's really hyped yet to watch a Christmas movie. But I have since learned that people are hyped to watch Christmas movies in October. And you want to come out swinging. You want to come out swinging. Like last year's Noel Next Door, like that was a great movie that I was expecting to not be great. Right. And so I think my expectations were a little high for like opening weekend. And this just didn't cut it. I agree. I mostly thought the story was a little too well. So here's what I think maybe happened. This to me was very classically Hallmark. Completely. To me, it felt like the writer was like, I'm going to write my first Hallmark movie. Give me the template. I'm going to follow this outline exactly. And it, he, yes. And the idea of the hometown hero and the small town and trying to break out of that. And that's very classically Hallmark. And then there's some familial drama. Mm-hmm. And there's, I want more than I can have. All of this. And I think maybe that's why it ended up, in, you know, you're like, oh, well, let's give our audience what we think they want. And what a good part of the Hallmark audience does want people do watch these movies in part for their predictability which Mm -hmm. doesn't mean they have to be cookie cutter right like i think they can be predictable and they can be safe and they can be low stakes without simply being a mad libs version of what people believe a hallmark movie should be agree i agree i thought the script really lacked depth Mm -hmm. like there was nothing beyond like these two like meeting and the hijinks about the debit card how do you only have one form of payment i don't understand 
Also, why would his card have been declined when she runs it unless there's this other storyline that gets cut where he's actually broke? We don't, I don't get that. That's, I don't think that's the case. No, they just act like it, it knew that she wasn't. I know. His makes sense because she goes, oh, this isn't your name. Fine. But it doesn't make sense why it would get declined. Right. Uh, even that, I felt like the retail person wouldn't be like, this oh, isn't your name. I would be like, that's my husband, my dad, my whatever. Yes. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> well, I will tell you that the debit card situation was inspired by an incident at a Dallas Cowboys game where the writer's wife got up to get snacks and the writer handed her his card. Mm -hmm. And then a minute later he looks down and there's a card on the ground and he's like, Oh no, she's going to be in line buying snacks without her card. And he realized it belonged to the person behind him. Oh, so he wrote a inspired by moment into that. We've talked about a cookie cutter script. Mm -hmm. At the end, we have two professionals who leave their careers on the chance that they might be together mm. blows my mind. They hardly knew each other. <laughs> you don't think that the career moments, like she's going to work with her friend in this up and like, they're going to take over town as like the real estate agents in town. I mean, the head gals retiring. Obviously she was, um, not loving her position in New York and was feeling not great about being mm -hmm. successful. But did I don't, had she been wavering going back and forth from leaving New York to Idaho Falls, I thought she was like, oh, I don't want to leave New York because I ha have done so much there already. And if I take a step back, that's going to ruin my like professional reputation. I think you're right. And I think she also would have felt like coming home was a failure. Oh, I believe goodness. she has a conversation with her parents where she's like, my parents worked so hard for me to be able to do what I'm doing that if I were to change course, they would be disappointed and it would have been a waste. And she has a conversation and they're like, we're proud of you for who you are. Mm -hmm. So I think when she has that conversation of feeling a little bit obligated to keep doing the big city job because her parent, it was came at a sacrifice to her from her family. I think that is woven in. I don't think it's, super in your face right my whole point is i didn't think that she was on the verge of making this decision until he comes back so they see each other at like the airport or whatever it was and then boom i'm gonna i'm gonna stay here in idaho falls too and mm. sell real estate and we gotta get an office and it just these are the details of these movies that i do not like yes are you ready for, did you see that? Yes, I am. Not only is Countdown to Christmas back, but you know what else is back? Our emails from correspondent Mike. Oh, nice. And he had a lot to say. And one thing he pointed out that we have not yet discussed is that often when the team is ready for practice and all of the guys are in skates, McGarry's still in socks. And he's like, I wonder if they didn't want him in skates any moment that he didn't have to be, like oh. walking around in skates. Like, don't get hurt, dude. Yeah, don't hurt the, the money guy. Yeah. <laughs> And speaking of the players, the missing tooth yes. on Tony yes. was so distracting to me. Oh, I have it in my notes, too. I watched this on my big TV. Oh, yeah. And at first when I saw him, I was like, that's interesting that they would have a, an actor missing a tooth. And then and then I realized, like, he was a hockey player, too. Yeah. And then upon, like, close, like... Um, inspection i could see like a little of the black missing from yes the, it's like uh, sharpie on a poster <laughs> so bad it's so bad but i did think it was funny and could appreciate that yes a hockey player often have missing teeth so sure it was it was kind of funny i thought but bad how often do you see taxis anymore? That's literally my next point. She hails a cab in small town Idaho. Right. Did you happen to see the name of the cab? It was something like neighborhood cab, yes. neighborhood taxi or something like that. <laughs> so funny. And not only like it's right there, like she steps off the curb to hail it. Like I'm sure this small town, we were recently in upstate New York and I had to call an Uber 
And I wasn't even sure if we'd get one. And the guy who came, he's like, yeah, I'm one of two Uber drivers in the area. <laughs> so they might have had a cab. It's certainly not roaming up and down the streets waiting for someone to need a ride. They're an on-demand call me situation. Yeah, that was so funny. And the other thing that I th- that I noticed is it was definitely cold when they were filming this. There was an outdoor scene where they're skating with kids and like you could see their breath. I was like, oh man, how cold. It was in March, right? Yeah, but March is winter. I know, I know, but woo. So I have two (laughs) Megan's husband says comments. Oh, let's hear. During the apple cider event, they keep zooming in on the teacups and he goes, why do they keep zooming in on these ugly ass cups? (laughs) I was like, it's, they're setting the scene, man. I noticed that too i don't know i that is funny i wonder why why they chose to do that they didn't have enough other b-roll evidently. probably and while mcgarry is coaching or briggs is coaching he goes he should just happy gilmore their asses i don't get the reference what does that mean like just go crashing through them like oh is that a know. golf reference yes, happy gilmore was a I golf movie right he someone's gonna understand the reference all right would you rate this movie two stars me too exactly Uh one for kim one for mcgarry (laughs) that's it i'm sorry i'm sorry i i'm excited that a new writer is writing for hallmark and i'm sure this was like a big deal but like yeah i'm glad hallmark is giving people a chance like that and i'm I'm, we're breaking out i'm looking forward to what's next if you love countdown to christmas we love your five-star ratings and reviews Help other people find Girls Gone Hallmark. It's the best gift you can give us. And it doesn't cost you a thing this holiday season. We'll be back tomorrow with another brand new Countdown to Christmas review. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Bye.